And welcome back to the channel, How Roots Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Soltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last several years, I've been focusing my attention on the Fijiwat, the King's Daughters, um, and getting to know their stories a little bit better. There are over 700 of them. Today, we're on episode 208. So we've come a long way. So let's keep going. Uh, here are some ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know and out my logarithms and all that is subscribe, like, notify. So then every time I post a new um, video, which is about three times a week, you'll get a little bell that will say, okay, new content. The next three are ways to help the channel grow. Uh, we have coffee, which is a one-time um, donation. We have Patreon, which is a monthly subscription. And we also have the Super Thanks, which is also a one-time donation. I also, on my website, have a PayPal button, if you're comfortable with PayPal. And those are all ways that you can donate. I want to thank all of you who have um, so far helped out. Your words and, and kind wishes make my day each and every, every day. So thank you so much. Let's carry on and get to know our episode number 208. This is episode 208, Catherine Norma. Yes, she is the older sister of episode 207, Maggie Madeleine. She came first. So let's have a look at Catherine's journey. Catherine was born in 1644 in Sals, France. Her parents were Jean-Baptiste Norma and Catherine Peugeot. Sals is the uh, commune that has about 26,000 people in it. It's part of the region of Bourgogne, Franche, Comte, and the department is Yonne. Um, Sals has been occupied since the time of the Gauls and by the Roman times. It had walls built around it which are still visible. Julius Caesar mentioned it to give you an idea of how important this place was at the time. The building of the Cathedral of Sens is in 1135 was one of the first cathedrals built in that really gothic style. King Louis IX was married here. Pope Alexander III, Thomas Beckett, William of Sens all spent some time in the city. The massacre of Sens in 1562 saw the murder of 11, 100 Huguenots, and the city of Paris overtook Sens in 1622 when Paris became the archdiocese. The church where um, she would have been baptized was saint La and dates back to the 13th century. And you can see the cathedral in the back of that picture of the modern day Sens, um, and um, just amazing how beautiful it still remains. She would arrive um, on June 18, 1665, after her father had passed away, um, and she would arrive on the Jean Baptiste de Dieppe. She carried with her a dowry worth about 500 pounds. So obviously she came from uh, means, and it's important to note that uh, her sister, uh, her younger sister, would join her four years later. The groom that she selected and who selected her, his name, Pierre Norma. De La Bria. Obviously, they had the same family name, but they were not related enough for the church to disapprove of it. So, so we don't know. Uh, they were also from different areas in France, so the odds are it was just a very common name. He was born in 1636 in Saint-Martin-du-Vieux-Belém in France. His parents were Pierre Normand and Marie Guillemet. Um, the church that he would have been baptized in dates from the 15th century, um, and it obviously is still intact and still uh, functioning. And um, this particular little village, it has about 500 people in it. So it's part of the Normandy and in that Normandy region and in the Département of Orne, which is a classic one in terms of a lot, a lot of um, French um, immigrants came from this particular part of France. So Pierre was both an edge tool maker and a bourgeois merchant. So he was coming to New France for opportunity. So Catherine and Pierre were married on September 7, 1665 in Quebec City in a small chapel, just um, in a small, um, a small parish in, uh, in Quebec City. Uh, attending there, their wedding was Anne Lamar, who we did a we profiled in the Fille du Roi back. I, I'm not sure of the. I think it's episode 17. I could be wrong. And um, 
And actually, before Catherine married, or Anne married, Anne Lamar, she actually lived with Pierre and Catherine in um, Quebec City. So it's kind of neat how they're all connected. So um, that is just, a, and the attorney, the, you know, the notary that grew up at uh, Duquette, um, she ended up marrying the notary, and she was one of the signer, signers of that wedding. So it's kind of all connected, you know? So in the 1666 census, Pierre Normand, Sœur de Le he's 28 years old, and he's a maître talandier, um, talandier, I should say, which means at edge toolmaker. Catherine Normand was his wife. We have the small Pierre Normand, who's two months old, and there's Anne de Laval, who's 21 and pensionnaire. In the 1667 um, census, we have Pierre, Catherine, and Pierre has now grown their son to 16 months. So they were part of Quebec City's very early on. Um, it is the capital city of the province of Quebec. Half a million people live directly in Quebec City. Quebec was um, named by the Algonquins, uh, which means in their native tongue, Quebec, uh, where the river narrows. The city walls that surround Quebec City date from 1608, uh, when Samuel Champlain built that city, uh, and those walls remain parts of them. And there, it's one of the only, it is the only city with remaining city walls north of Mexico. Uh, the Maison Jacquet, um, I always like to point it out because it was around in 1675 when they would have been there. Um, it is the oldest surviving private residence in Quebec. Um, if you'd like to tour it, it's part of a famous restaurant called Aux Anciens Canadiens, which roughly translated is to our old Canadians or to our historic Canadians. Um, then we have Le Merci, um, Le Petit Champlain, which claims to be the oldest commercial district in North America. So I like to imagine Pierre and Catherine walking down this street, you know. And then this is a kind of a depiction of, of Quebec in 1700 and an old style map of Quebec and how it would have existed. We would go on to have 11 children. Pierre would die tragically at 21. Etienne would not marry, but would give birth to a natural child with François Juchereau, whose name was Michel Angélique Juchereau. This would be an excellent source of research. Michel, her daughter, would have two children who reached adulthood. So I'd be I would love to find out if there's any descendants listening. Charles would die sometime after the 1681 census. Marguerite would marry Charles Etienne Gazon. They had at least one son who then would leave for France. Their son would marry in France. So no further information is known. But can we see if there's anyone out there? Wouldn't that be something? Philippe would die in infancy. Charles Baptiste would also um, die in infancy. Anne would marry Jérôme Corda, but did not produce any descendants. The second Jean would also die in infancy. Louis would marry Anne Bruno and have one child. François would die at the age of 16. So you can see that this was a line that did not grow very much. So, um, so it's interesting. It's interesting to see um, because some of them had natural children, some of them returned to France. So um, in the 1681 census, we have Pierre Normand, Normand, the Labrière, we have Catherine Normand, his wife, Etienne, Charles, Marguerite, Philippe, Jean, Anne, Louis. They have one gun and one cow. So Catherine would pass away first in 1703. She is buried at Notre Dame in Quebec City. She was about 59 years of age. She and Pierre would have celebrated their 38th wedding anniversary that um, following September. So even for the time, 59 is very, very young. Now, Pierre would pass away four years later at the age of 73 on December 13, 1707 in hospital, which indicated that he probably was sick. Um, and uh, was being taken care of. Now, and he is buried at the Hotel Dieu Cemetery, as far as I can, I can make out. Here are some of my resources that I, I um, always use. I want to talk to you a little bit about Genealogy Quebec. Yes, I know it's a paying website, but it really is worth its weight in gold. Even if you subscribe for one month, um, you know, that sort of thing, 
it's, you know, you just go at it, you know, and, and get all your files and get all the information as much as possible. Um, I use it on a daily basis, of course, for all the research, but um, honestly, uh, it's a wonderful, and compared to Ancestry.com, it's very inexpensive. So I would definitely urge you to check that out. So we end episode 208 of our sister uh, duo. Um, you know, Catherine and Piel did not leave a lot of descendants that we know of. Remember that that 1729, um, you know, study was really about the descendants that were in Quebec. Because when you were looking at America or Europe, they, they didn't include that because they didn't know. So I would be fascinated to know if there's a branch of the family that is in France um, and also the branch from Etinette uh, for her natural children. Have a look at that. Um, and so like the 20 descendants that are listed, that's something. But please let me know. Um, obviously, there's a viewer that is a descendant. But please let me know if you're a descendant of this particular 20. That's not a lot to start with but you never know um so and i also want to um pay tribute to my patrons and supporters um just ever so grateful i got a message just yesterday um you know acknowledging you know the work i've done and how it's helped them and that sort of thing it just warms my heart you know so thank you so very very much i started this project two years ago not knowing how it would grow so it's lovely to see how it has bloomed so thank you so much and i'll see you on episode 209 until then au revoir